terror begins again. And welcome to this edition of Motorcycle Madhouse Radio. How you guys doing out there? We have a special show for you today. We're going to be talking a lot about this case with the bandito who got pulled over and had a CCW license, but they are prosecuting him because he had a weapon on him and... It's going on right now. I think it actually went to appeals real quick because <laughs> how the hell are you not going to tell the jury that this is a guy who had a legal right to carry a gun, but they want to prosecute him anyway. We also have in the news more down this uh, Second Amendment right. Uh, we're going to be talking about Virginia. 90% of the state is now a gun sanctuary by county and they also got a county that is starting up a militia not good news and we're going to talk about how this ties into this charade of impeachment i don't care if you like the president or not we're talking about rules and precedences that this is gonna set impeachment wasn't supposed to be this type of tool in fact I've lived through two impeachments now, and I know a lot of guys my age have too. <laughs> Before that, it was all the way back in the 1865 with uh, Johnson. So some scary stuff happening right now in this country. But let's uh, take a look at this case that's going on right now. Okay, here we go. KCEN-TV. That's a different one, at least, from that uh, KWTX that wrote that uh, bogus story about the banditos and the outlaws trying to get together with that uh, Bolivian Nationals or whatever crap they put out there. You just see that video and uh, segment on MotorcycleMadhouse.com. Anyway, county prosecutes bandito member for riding with a gun even with license to carry. See how this is going to start forming into a Second Amendment type of fight? Should members of the Banditos Motorcycle Club be allowed to carry a gun while riding? A local man is on trial in Milham County for doing just that. The Second Amendment didn't say that if you were part of this or that, you couldn't do it. As long as you were an American citizen, you had rights under the Constitution. It didn't give this or that, and that's what I can't understand about these people in gun control. Actually, there's a gun control debate that's going to happen in the Supreme Court. Hopefully they don't kick it out. But I think that it's time for the Supreme Court to step up and give a yes or no. Really, this issue is destroying this country because the so-called judges won't put out a damn ruling. It's been 10 years and even that was vague. They need to address the issue of gun tr control once and for all. And this case going on right now is just Oh my God, I can't believe this case. It's been going on, and it's just moronic how they're going through it. Anyway, Vannon was pulled over in November of 18, going 67 miles an hour in a 60. He had a license to carry and had a gun when he was stopped, meaning he was legal if he had that CCW. Quote, what we have to appeal is whether or not Mr. Vannon and his license to carry are able to be mentioned in front of the jury, his lawyer said. Are you kidding me? They're going to try to have a trial and not let this guy put in front of the jury that he had a legal right to carry. This is Texas now. No wonder the state's going purple because you got all this freaking liberal nonsense going on there. How in the hell can you not give a defendant the right to defend himself in this country? He had the legal right to do it. That's why the prosecutor don't want it in front of the jury. More than 24 hours after jury selection, the case abruptly ended in a mistrial and an appeal. Defense attorney Kurt Glass told Six News that Judge Steve Young ruled the mistrial after Glass refused to exclude a critical fact in the trial. Glass said the prosecution 
filed a motion last week requesting that Vannon's license to carry, which was valid at the time of arrest, was not to be admitted into evidence. This sounds like Waco all over again. You know, what is it with your prosecutors down in Texas, man? If I were you guys, I, I wouldn't have anybody move to Texas. This is just out of control down there where are your representatives well better yet where are you on getting on the phone with your representatives this is no this is no ways that this is going to pass on appeal where he had a legal right to carry he didn't do nothing wrong but seven miles over the speed limit the only reason why they're doing this is because of him being a bandito you are kidding me man on freaking real the court of appeals has the option to send the case back down with no decision or they can tell the judge quote hey you have to follow the law and allow mr vannon to tell the jury he was allowed to carry a weapon well that makes sense to me but we're not living in them times anymore we're living in such a country that's so far outside of what it used to be it, it it's sickening it really is it's sickening Court documents state that Vanden was stopped by the Department of Public Safety Trooper Michael Tice. You should be so proud of yourself. You swore an oath to depend the Constitution and the laws. You should be so proud of yourself. According to a court transcript, Tice said he checked Vanden's driver's license and then confirmed Vanden was a gang member in the Texas Gang Intelligence Index. DPS later told 6 News the Texas gang database records are not to be used to independently confirm gang affiliation. Okay, well, if law enforcement performs a wanted persons check and the person being search has been entered into the Texas gang, the return will indicate the person is a possible gang member. There is no message that states the person is registered and confirmed as a gang member. So, you know, the Fourth Amendment's rights uh, were violated right there. The Texas Department of Public Safety said in an emailed response, Tice arrested Vanden for unlawful carrying a weapon based on the record and colors Vanden was wearing. You guys are real morons, these cops down there. You guys wouldn't get away with that in Chicago, man. You guys, you know, yeah, you might be in Texas, but nah, uh <laughs> Glass showed Six News reporter Andrew Moore on Tuesday wherein the law a license to carry should protect someone in Vannon's position. He referred to Penal Code 4602, states a person cannot carry a handgun if they are a member of a criminal street gang as defined by 7101. The Bandito's outlaw motorcycle gang has been labeled a criminal gang by Department of Public Safety. However, another section says the previous section mentioned does not apply to a person who is carrying a LTC issued under subchapter H chapter 411 provided they are carrying correctly. Glass said Vaden was carrying the gun correctly. Young in this case wrote that the license carry should not apply here and Vannon should not ride with a gun after speaking with Six News legal expert Liz Mitchell. Quote, sometimes in the penal code we do not have certain statutes that may be both applicable at the same time and may even be at odds. That's not up to you to decide, that's up to the legislature to decide. Not up to you as a prosecutor. The penal codes are there, it's not up to you to interpret them. Jesus, man. No wonder this country's all messed up. That's where a judge might come into play based on his or her representative of the legislative intent. Get out of here, man. Mitchell said judges can and do make subjective decisions by interpreting law and decide what evidence should be valid in a jury trial. Well, there you go, a jury trial. You're able to put on your defense in front of jurors. You can't exclude revelant freaking uh, information that can acquit somebody. That's just like this impeachment scam. They just came out this morning. Again, I don't care if you're for Trump or not. It has to do with our Constitution. You can't have it to where you're bitching about gun rights. And then on the other hand, well, I don't like him. He should. It don't work that way. What they did in that freaking impeachment last night was rip apart what the Constitution really said. 
And now they don't want to hand over the impeachment papers because they know it's a joke. It's going to get acquitted right away. You know, it's time for the people to start taking back their country, man. And it's time for people to stop with the freaking childish crap. Get on the phone and get a hold of them and say, hey, no, this ain't working out. And even worse is the people, oh, my vote won't matter. You know what? You're morons then, man. Don't bitch. Don't complain when something goes back bad because you didn't want to vote because your vote didn't matter. Ask that in the 2000 election with Bush when only 500 uh, votes put him in the office. You're kidding me, man. You guys really are. It makes you sickening that people don't want to get involved. And what's even worse, not even talking about this, is when you're crying and whining about helmet laws or you're crying and whining about profiling, you don't do nothing. You just sit there and complain on the internet. That's not how it works. But let's go and show you just how uh, messed up it really is getting. And I believe uh, Virginia is going to be ground zero for this. Uh, right now, I consider us in a soft civil war. That's how it first starts is all the back and forth. If you study history, you'll see what I'm talking about. But this right there, this is the reason why the Supreme Court needs to do its job and freaking rule on what's going on with the freaking gun control because it is out of freaking control with these people. I don't get what they don't understand. It's in writing, in the Constitution. It was voted upon to be put in the Constitution and they still try to find their ways around it. Aren't you people sick of these socialists yet? I'm just asking, aren't you sick of them? Well, Virginia is. Virginia County Board of Supervisors forms an active militia. Taswell County, Virginia, you can't stop an ideal whose time has come. That's a lesson we've seen hammered home by the Second Amendment sanctuary movement in Virginia in the last month. And I hope that other states start following suit. It needs to all start coming to a head because our our country is getting destroyed by these leftist socialist ideals. Enough's enough. Put them in check. But in Tazewell County, they raised the bar on Tuesday, December 10th. The Board of Supervisors passed two different resolutions. The first resolution declared the county to be a Second Amendment sanctuary. The second promoted the order of militia in the county. When the resolutions passed, the cheer crowd loudly in support of the decision, and they didn't squeak by. The votes were unanimous. Yeah, you got, you got to hold your uh, representatives accountable, and that's what these people were doing, with more than 200 citizens standing by support. The militia resolution has... Already unofficially, it passed thanks to a poll taken by the county earlier in the month. But Board Chairman Travis Hackworth said the voters kept calling for the county to declare itself a Second Amendment sa sanctuary. Huckworth went on to say the Board of Supervisors has three lawyers on it. You don't need a lawyer. If you want to do something within your county, let them come. You know, the Democrats in Virginia actually said, and this is the reason why the Second Amendment is so important, well, if they don't follow our rules, call the National Guard in. Right there is what's going to start everything. You had a sitting member of their Congress call for the National Guard to be sent in. You guys are moronic, man. You really are. If you do not think people are going to take up arms against the government... You're, you're, you're sorely mistaken. And people says, well, that can't happen in this day and age. The military. If you look at history, you'll see during that Civil War, everybody broke half and half, even in the military. And if you don't think it happened in modern times, look all over the world. And then people didn't have the guns that we got. <laughs> he went on to say uh, the three lawyers carefully examined some of the other declarations passed by other Virginia counties to make sure that theirs didn't miss anything or water anything down. And then he goes on to say, follow the money, follow uh, funding is the chokehold. The teeth in these bills usually come down to two things, funding and prosecution. Tadwell County's regulate or resolutions both would eliminate funding for any branch of law enforcement that 
that would infringe on the right of the citizens to keep and bear arms. But if the state tried to turn the tables, they could deny the county funding in areas other than law enforcement or even attempt to remove the elected officials standing in their way. Yeah, keep it going, man. Keep it going. You're just going to, you got a boiling pot right now. Given the threats from North Rim and Congressman Mechchin this week, those are very legitimate fears. Uh, you, you know what? You're either going to look away from the money and stand on principle or let it happen. That's all I have to say, man. Uh, if the governor and any other state entities tries to remove our sheriff from office for disobeying unjust laws, they face a legally assembled group of armed citizens standing against them. <laughs> yeah, it, wow. And this story is out of the Second uh, Amendment Daily News. So it's getting pretty messed up out there. You know, I want to bring up another story, and it has to do with this impeachment. And this has to do with bikers in general. You have an organization out there called Bikers for Trump. Now, Chris Cox, he used it to his advantage so he can run. He was never about bikers. And you that are in them damn organizations who can't see that are fools. You are just nothing but ignorant fools. Now, Bikers for Trump main premise was that, you know, they fight for Trump's policies and stuff like that. Well, an article came out where they said, well, we're not riding for impeachment. You know, we'll ride for one ride against Republicans that uh, break party lines. You know how much of bullshit that is? You guys were nothing but talk. And you guys make bikers look sad. You really do. You go, you have this guy popping off at the freaking mouth about how he's this and that. It turns out he's not. And now it turns out that he's running for Congress. Get out of here, man. The guy didn't even have a bike when he started this Bikers for Trump. It was just a gimmick. This is a guy who went around picking up garbage during a government shutdown. But he latched on to the biker lifestyle because he knew how bikers were. And you idiots freaking fell for it. You know, I cannot be more disgusted with a set of bikers than I am now. You say one thing, do another. And that's the reason why your organization is looked at like a joke by a lot of many people that have been around this scene for a long freaking time, especially following somebody who's never been a biker, who's never rode a motorcycle until you dummies paid for it. So I hope that bikers are a lot more smart about what's going on in this country. You know, the process of what they're trying to do in Washington just shows you the elites don't give a crap about us. It's only about their political futures, and they really don't care about your rights as citizens. This thing going on in Texas, it, something needs to be done where people start freaking getting off the couch and getting involved and doing something. Because if you don't, don't cry and whine, man. I know I spend most of my day on the phone with these people and letting them know we try to pull off uh, you know, what we can as far as what we represent with Insane Throttle Biker News. We're always talking to these people, these congressmen and stuff about what's going on in the country. So you need to do your part as well because it's getting bad out there. I have never seen this country divided like it is now. And to be living through two impeachment trials, you're kidding me, man. You really are. Then you actually you want to know how ignorant uh, some of these news media so-called are anyway. You think that story was bad with the outlaws banditos, but you look at... They put out and thing, well, there's only been four presidents impeached in this country's history. Are you kidding me? Nixon resigned. There wasn't no impeachment, you fools. Learn your history. And if you don't think this country's as divided as ever, look right before the Civil War. That's what I can freaking tell you. Let me know your comments in the show notes in the comments section. Don't forget to go over to hooliganbiker.com, harleyliberty.com for your uh, biker news. I'll talk to you guys later. In your face, all over the place. We're online 24 7, 24 7. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe.